Merry Christmas. How are you? Merry Christmas, Gareth. Gareth, I, you know, I'm had, I've had a fantastic Christmas so far. I trust that you have. I bet you've been extremely busy with the little man running around like a lunatic. I'm sure he's enjoying all batteries, his presents. Any batteries or anything, Andy? <laughs> I've got batteries. I've still got batteries. Yeah, the lights haven't run out yet. <laughs> We're saving them for the torches. We might need those in the new year. Um, so, listen, hey, we've got a fantastic show for today, and um, you know, we've got a guest coming on in just. A a moment or two is a very good friend of mine um for a crikey i'm going to say best part of 15 years now um but this is a christmas special um you know we we want to keep it going we want to keep you all sort of enticed we've got a prize and uh you know so you know we are really really looking forward to spending time with melvin fern from four counties golf uh, melvin is the uk and european distributor uh, for seymour he also works with fantastic brands like Mura and uh, Tour Edge, um, you know, so he's been my club builder and um, fitter for uh, probably 12, 13, 14 years. I don't think there's a set of golf clubs that I have had straight in the bag that he's not tinkered with somewhere along the line. And nowadays, you know, he literally just strips them out as soon as I get them. If they're built from the manufacturers because they have, that's the only way they can leave the factory, he rebuilds them and does what I want them to do. And he, he's learning on the job sometimes. You know, we've done some fantastic experiments in recent times. And of course, he's just built me some Edison wedges, which we were talking about last time. So, um, yeah, Melvin, you know, we're going to welcome him. But uh, this is going to be a fantastic um show i'm just i'm really i'm stoked for this i'm ready for it you know mm. i mean it's just going to be great we've got some insights about the talk and we got a prize um you know we've got something really special coming up so uh you know if you are ready and waiting welcome everybody to the andy gorman golf one putt podcast christmas edition 2020 with melvin fern from four counties golf melvin come on come on mate in you come and you know look forward to this we're looking forward to 2021 like it is going to be the next best thing in golf we'll catch you soon all right and what i would like to say today is a very warm welcome to our very good friend of course, yes, I've got Gareth on the the wingman. He's sitting there, but my extremely good friend and uh, close uh, working partner with the uh, Seymour brand, UK and European distributor, Melvin Fern from Four Counties Golf. Melvin, very much, very warm welcome to, you know, Andy Gorman Golf Podcast. Um, you know, welcome. Merry Christmas. I'll say that one to you because we're going out Christmas week. And I know we've got plenty of things to, to discuss with regards to Seymour and four counties and the things that you do. But, um, you know, introduce yourself to all of our uh, listeners, Melvin, and uh, I say a very warm welcome. Um, looking forward to spending time with you online. OK, that's great. Thanks for inviting me along, Andy, because um, it's a good point. You know, you've been doing this for a while now and it's a great format for, for us to come on and talk about products we do, uh, why we do it and how we've got relationships with guys like you are helping us sell product in the field. Um, Four Counties Golf is a two-pronged business, really. We, we're a custom fitting shop and we have the Seymour uh, distribution, uh, which is probably a bigger part of the business now. It's grown that way. Um, out there, we've got a big array of outlets from pro shops, greenfield sites, to uh, custom fitting shops like myself, to guys like Andy uh, who specialize in short game and putting mm -hmm. and basically is one of our tour fitting centers. We only have a few in the country and that, that's somebody who can offer everything for us. Uh, so they can offer the product, they offer it a full service for the customer, teaching all the way through. And, and we work together on this, um, very, very open book working, I think it's fair to say. We try and develop partnerships uh, to do that. And uh, it's worked well for us. And we've been doing it for a long time now. I mean, I've been involved with Seymour for about 10 years, 12 years. Um, I've been fitting clubs for 16. 
uh, and I've known Andy for a high percentage of those years. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, you used to be right around the corner for me. The convenience of just dropping in and um, you know, sort of picking up whatever I needed has has you know been lost a little bit. So I do miss that part of our relationship you know that little bit of a drop in on the way home or you know just down the road from where I work but of course you know you are literally only you know sort of 35 minutes away in the car so it's not as inconvenient as uh, as it might sound but um, <laughs> that, the convenience of having you on my doorstep uh, is definitely noticeable but uh, you know in the loss of that but um, you know t- 10 12 years you know is a long time to be working with a brand and you know that takes a special relationship talk us a little you know through a little bit um the relationship that you have with the guys um in nashville uh, of course the u.s company based and um you know how that came about and you know the sort of relationship i mean i know the guys well and you know i've been on their putting couch their own podcast and as you know you know it's they are a very unique set of, uh, of I say individuals. They're more like family um, to us all. But, you know, you tell us from, you know, from your point of view, what Seymour, you know, and, uh, and the guys there are, are like to work with. Well, I, I kind of fell into it in a sense. I, I was retailing the product and the, the company that were wholesaling stopped doing it. And I still wanted to, believing in the product, uh, I still wanted to sell it. Um, I was importing stuff from the States anyway, so I contacted Seymour and basically started just buying as a, for, for all intents and purposes, as a retail customer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it grew and we, be, we became known as somebody who got Seymour product in the UK, which was pretty rare anyway. Uh, and Seymour as a company has a, a massive profile, particularly on the PGA Tour, because of the players that have won and the events they've won. Um, but the company is a relatively small company. Um, it's about 10 people in total. Uh, the two guys that own it, Jim and Jason, uh, work with Odyssey originally and then basically bought the company in 2006. Um, so we've been with them for, for quite a bit of the journey. Um, And we worked with them uh, developing uh, the business in the UK through to the tour fitting centres. Again, as a partnership, you talk to the owners. It's very much a hands-on relationship. We we Skype with them once or twice a week and you speak to the owner if you need to. Or we Skype with them once a month if we need to. Again, it depends Mm -hmm. on what you need. But it's open all hours and it's a very friendly relationship. Ted, who's one of the guys who's been there a, a long time as well, he he doesn't work as much. He works up more on the uh, the IT side and also the podcasts and all that side of it. He's not in the office every day. Again, we've known Ted since really he started with the company. So those sort of relationships go deep. Um, and came into the business about five six years ago when she retired. And again straight away she now is is sort of certified as an instructor uh she's done everything through and and it's seen very much as one of the european team with from the guys over there and it, it's a great way to do business it, it's a, it's a family type business relationship and it, it's pretty hard to build mm. yeah it is it's a you know certainly for me it is unique in the golf industry I, a, a, few, a couple of years ago, I remember Jim saying to me that Seymour were the largest independent uh, putter manufacturer in the world. Um, I see no reason why that has changed. Um, you know, there may well be, a, you know, contenders to that crown now, but certainly, you know, Seymour is growing. We know how much it's grown here in the UK. Tell us, you know, from your point of view, how much that growth has happened and, and, and if you can, what you put it down to. Well, it's, it's an interesting thing. As I say, when I started, um, the, the distributor who was wholesaling it then stopped. So there was a, a marketplace which people had got stock and they were selling off. And, and then there was really myself. I was the only person that was selling it for a while. And don't get me wrong, I was, you know, 
20, 30, 40 putters a year when I first started. And when Jim and I had a, a conversation about doing some wholesale, I did it the easy way. Uh, and that is go to my friends in the business and say, you know, I'm going to import this. You know, will you take a few off me? And, and that was how I started. Uh, and, and we got up and we, we started to sell and we got up to a few hundred putters a year. And then um, after a while, again, Jim and I had the PGA show and then on, on Skype sat down and thought, right, how can we grow it to the next level? Uh, and we started to involve uh, some agents uh, to go out there and, and tread the boards for us out there and knock on doors for us. Um, and we had a massive growth. We, we have about 100 outlets now. Um, some of those outlets are very active. Some basically will take one order a year and just sell them in their pro shop. So it, it's a total uh, uh, mixture of what we do. And, uh, and as I say, as I said earlier, we have some tour fitting centers. Um, Andy being one of the tour fitting centers. We've got one in Scotland. Um, we've got one in the South. Um, and again, to keep tour fitting center status is, is quite difficult because we want you to do everything. Uh, and again, with the, the melee of brands that are out there and all the attractive propositions other people are putting, that's, that can be difficult for people. Mm. The people who stay with us, I think, are signed into us because of the uniqueness of the product. Yeah. So we've continued to grow the business. Um, obviously, this year, um, as everybody, it's been a strange year. So uh, we had the sort of initial lockdown and nothing happened. And we, we did sell, but basically uh, online or, or mm. people sat at home and just wanted to buy something because they were fed up. Um, and some of our outlets who were selling online were, were selling stuff as well. But again, we, we, it was very quiet, um, but we were, it's a, it's a long-term business for us. We, we got start. We wanted to support the outlets and carry on through. And then the business has continued to grow. And, and one of the surprising thing about this year is that we have introduced probably 10 or 12 new outlets in the last two to three months. Okay. Um, there's no logic to it. I, I, I'd love <laughs> to give you the magic of how this has happened. Part of it is word of mouth. Part of it that we've supplied, and I think part of it is that we don't we don't tie people into massive pre buys. Our business is about custom fitting. We don't want yeah. you to have putters that you. Oh, I've got ten of these on the shelf. I've got to get rid of them. We yeah. want you to sell them the right putter the right fit, fit the player. So our business is very individual, very unique, and is very much where you can you get a, a custom built putter for you for less than 200 pounds. Mm. Marvin, where do you feel that, that that kind of word custom fit fears some professionals? Because I know there's not many people out there with your skill set, your knowledge. So where could people go maybe to, to kind of upskill themselves? Well, I think, uh as as we take on an outlet we put all our outlets through the the spi which is the seymour putter institute mm -hmm. which has got two levels it's got a, an initial start level which is a familiarization people get to know the product what we do um and it's all done online with the us uh through cody hale who's the tour rep out in the states and then there's a second level of that which is you can go on to a teaching um, area, which is normally people do after they've had the product for two or three months. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they basically are, you know, learning on the job. Um, I, I like to think we have a very much of an open telephone come email. Um, so they, they pick up, if people have got problems with that, we'll, we'll help them, we'll help them with specking. There's lots of different things that go on when people are specking. The other thing we try to do, if somebody specs a putter and it's odd, or I think it's odd, or we think it's odd, we'll ask the reason why, and again, try and explain why we think that putter is going to be slightly out of balance for the player. But again, it, it, it's, it's very much 
I think we it's an online ongoing learning process for us. So I think we, we tend to to uh, keep the educational thing going. Uh, we run the podcasts, a lot of the podcasts that are run from the States are not just sales podcasts, they're also educational podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it, 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 you've got to keep, basically, it, this is a constant learn. I think, I think the interesting thing there is, what is a custom fit? Which is a, a really interesting question because, you know, there's certain manufacturers now that are doing a custom fit on the telephone. Um, you know, it's the level of custom fit. We, we are very much into a, a player being fitted in a pro shop or in a fitting studio. Um, now, that doesn't suit everybody. People still want to buy online, so we could, we're could we going to have an online fitting profile. But our preferred option and the way we find people get most out of it is being fit in a studio or in a pro shop and following that up with lessons afterwards for the player. So it's, we all got bad habits when we play golf. And initially, if you have, a say, a half-hour session or a one-hour session, you also forget a lot of things. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, you go away, you've bought a new putter, you forget things. It's great to have a follow-up lesson to basically be reminded of those things, to look at what you've, what the faults are, how it's, how it's working out, and, and, and basically sort out any problems for the guys. Yeah, and I've, I've been through SPI and I can, again, encourage any PJ Pro out there who's listening, please get in touch with, with Arne and Malvin because it's an amazing, very robust process. And if you're going to retail the product level two, absolute knockout and the video instruction, the support to go with the course as well is, is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think, I mean, we we have got into the fact that we, we're, we've not been taking outlets on that don't do SPI mm. level one. Yeah. We, we, we're, a, we're, we are a small company. We can't, our, our benchmark has got to be custom fit. Mm -hmm. We can't be a, a pile them high, knock them out the door type company product. Well, that's, that's not our portfolio. Mm -hmm. What we are is giving you a custom built. And it's not just a custom fit. The product is then custom built. So yeah, yeah. it's built for you. So, you know, if Andy comes to me and says, I've got a putter that I need to be this length. We need to look at the head weight. We can change that. All those mm -hmm. things are, are things we can do when we build the product. Yeah, it's one of the things that I love about the Seymour brand. It, it, you know, there's so much to love about the Seymour brand. You know, it's pedigree, you know, on tour, the fact that the players use it because... You know they they like what the product does. You know is, is testament to, um, you know how strong, how robust, how you know how solid that putter is as a as a working uh, tool. That's that's really the key. Um, you know I think from from any anything really is if you can get it um, if you can get a product to do what you want it to do, you know and get a player to use it. Be, and not be paid for it then you know it's doing what you want it to do at the rst the, the hide the red dot um you know i can wax lyrical about that all day long but i'm going to hand it over to you melvin I, but the but the key here <laughs> you've got you on i've got you on so that i get an easy ride but you know at the end of the day we have got something another reason for having you on which will uh, show it up a little bit later but um you've got some product there right so i can see just sort of yeah. in the box one of the screen there um explain to us how the rst works um from your point of view certainly from my point of view let me just let me fit. put that over with the black and white because it's better it's going to be a better look yeah, yeah? exactly that's easier to Is see but the custom fit element of the and the custom build element of the seymour is probably the most significant part of it for me, when I work with another, well, when I try to work with manufacturers, it's extremely difficult when a manufacturer finishes the product and drops it at 33, 34, and 35 inches. Whatever the head weight might be from there, whatever it is, you know, almost irrelevant at that point. When a putter is finished, it is then being chopped up at a couple, you know, two, three, four hundred pounds these days for putters, you know, in order to, so the grip's coming off, you know, it's got to be extended, you know, all these things that go on. I know that I can get from Seymour a 
built product with a shaft of, you know, if it comes to me pre-built, it's built as a specific, you know, in a specific way, but it's built with a shaft that's 38, 40 inches. If I need it, I can get that. You know, I can get the length of club that I need for a player to be able to do what I need to do. And, you know, for those of you that are listening for the first time and don't know, you know, 38, 40 inch, uh, these guys over six foot five, six foot six are going to need product that length. And so it's important to have that, you know, it's the same way that they would have a size 11 or 12 shoe, you know, in order to be comfortable when they go out to walk on the golf course, they need to have the same thing for their putter so that not bending over and breaking their backs. Back to the RST, just explain how that works for uh, our listeners and viewers. Okay, so the RST part of the product is the red dart and two white lines. And basically what you're looking to do is hide the red dart with the shaft, that's why you have the black shaft at the bottom, mm -hmm. with your setup. And that's the real important thing not by moving your hands to hide the red dot. It's about you setting up in the correct position. Now, there are lots of reasons for being set up and starting in this correct position. The first one, obviously, if you start in the correct position, you have a chance of finishing in the correct position. But one of the things that this impacts is that is when you, you are, look, I mean, I think it's pretty, pretty much agreed we are all put on a, a very an arc. Mm -hmm. Arc varies, but we all put on a slight arc. Yes. And if you're putting if you're putting on an arc, the ball position is critical. And so when you put on that arc, we want this to be square at point of impact. Because mm -hmm. if it's if it, the ball is forward, it's closed, it's going to miss left all the time. Yeah. So, so when we're with this this RST lining up. Is, is allowing you to set up in that position. And if you rock, rock on it, put on that arc, stay on that arc, you will, the club face will be square at impact. You've still yeah. got to aim, you've still got to pick your line, you've still mm -hmm. got to do all those things. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is giving you a start point to ensure you are starting in the correct position. Now, there are a couple of other little bonuses that go with that. Put us have, have a loft on them. And again, if you don't have that ball in the, the correct position, it impacts the loft of the putter when you contact the ball. So yeah, actually so, yeah. you don't get the same level of roll mm. that you will get, whereas if you're hitting it on the up, you're hitting it behind it. Uh, so, so again, I, I get a lot of people that say, you know, particularly with short puts, uh, I, I roll my long puts great. Well. They don't see how it sets off when they hit the long one. So it's, it's not really. Mm. But when you've got four foot and you're thinking, I need to make this to save my bar or whatever, then that's when it gets twitchy. And that's when people bounce the ball, for want of a better way, because they move, they don't set up correctly. They put differently to what they did mm -hmm. on a 25 putter. And um, so this is a reminder. And if you set up with this in the correct position, you'll get the same roll off the face. You won't get a bounce out of it. Yeah. And so you can control the pace of the ball and effectively practicing from four foot, moving it back to five foot, six, ten foot. Ten foot's the, the new buzzword, isn't it? Because mm. Bryce can make 90% from ten foot. That, that's a figure that was never anywhere near. We know yeah. Zach was making 66% and nobody was near him on the PGA Tour. Yeah, right. So basically what you're looking to do is make that, that bowl a lot bigger. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, the, 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 you know, when it comes down to it from a coaching point of view, the, the consistency of the setup delivers consistency of results at impact. And... You know, the, being able to hide the red dot, if that red dot becomes visible or the white lines become a little blurred, um, you know, it's crucial that you get that, you know, box ticking exercise sort of out of the way, really. For me, you know, when we line the ball up to the target, if we're using a line and then position the putter down, you know, folk ask me all the time, you know, Andy, you're a good putter, you're a recognized putting coach. Why do you use a Seymour putter? And I have to say the single reason why I use a Seymour putter is because I can lose sight of the ball position in, you know, a very short period of time. 
I can see a red dot. I take notice of it, have a couple of practice strokes, and I'm right back into it. If I didn't have that, that ball position could creep forward. It's my go-to default, you know, from 43 years of playing golf and 20 of them, you know, not as well. You know, ultimately, you know, that ball position creeps forward and, you know, I keep sight of the RST element of it. I hide the red dot. I don't keep sight of it. You know, if mm-hmm. I start to see it, you know, I'm I've immediately drawn to that couple of putts on a couple of strokes on the side of the putting green or the next tee. And I can start to see it. So I can start to feel some of the misses when they come to, you know, when they start to happen. If I feel I should have hold it in the middle of the, uh, of the hole and it goes in left center or left edge, you know, I can start to f- see, I'll put my putter down, I'll have a look. Maybe I can see just a very slight slither of that red visible on the right side of the shaft. That club face falls a little forward. The club face is likely to be more closed. You know, step away moment, we call it. It is the step, very much so, yeah. <laughs> and at that point then, I know that I'm, I'm a couple of putts away from getting everything back to centre again, back into the neutral position. And if I didn't have a Seymour putter in the bag, you know, it would literally be how many putts would go down the left-hand side before I started to realise the ball position was maybe a half a ball or a ball in front of where it would ordinarily be. Because we all know that those little subtle changes creep up on us and don't hit us clean between the eyes you know you know from one putt to the next they just creep 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 and we all have those tendencies to create bad habits around it Mm. so um it becomes reactionary then you know which changes the way the stroke um moves and we don't want that you know so i mean again you you sort of you know there's lots of figures and i'm not going to quote them but something like one degree off at the putter face this is my two inches at 10 feet and it does 2.09 inches there you go there's your quote (laughs) i was close i was it's missed absolutely close enough (laughs) you know at the end of the day you know and we get half a degree out at 20 feet you know the numbers just change completely but the, the daft thing is at three feet then we're three degrees of error and the ball will still be on the edge if the pace is right the ball will still be going in and that for me is one of the biggest challenges when a golfer you know comes in and says i'm struggling with these hole outputs you know the lack of consistency in the setup is one of the biggest challenges i also call it the cone of error um you know where i put a couple of sticks down either side of the the ball and the hole show them what that error looks like you know that six degrees of error uh, three either side of the center line and then ask them, do you think that over three feet you can get the golf ball to roll down there and then put them down? And I'll always do, because I've always got my own Seymour putter there, put them down with a Seymour putter and say, now, can you hide the red dot and get into the same place every single time? And they're doing it, you know. So straight away, they see the benefits of getting into the consistent setup position because they don't always buy a Seymour putter, but they realize what the benefits of the Seymour putter is. Um, I've seen some new marketing. I know it's new because I've been around for a long time with you. Um, and, you know, I know it's coming from the guys in the States, but everybody should own a Seymour Potter, even if it's just for a training aid. Yeah. I thought I was a mate. I thought I was brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> Clever. You know, just being, I know you've seen it, Gareth. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, because even if you don't play with it, because, you know, for whatever reason you choose to play something else, at least train with the RST, hide the red dot, get into a consistent setup position, keep your hands in that constant position, you know, and the ball relative to your body and your training consistency, your training as close to perfect as you can get. And, you know, I thought that was a really smart, you know. I think that's that's come from something you know and I know uh, because of the work we've done on the tours. Mm. That there are a number of players out there that have one at home and use it purely as a training aid, but because of the company they are contracted to, yeah. that's unfortunately where it stays. Yeah. And yeah. you know that that's that's been around for. I mean, I pretty much have built a number uh, and some of really high-profile players, uh, and uh, effectively. I know it's going to be a practice putter, mm. but they, yeah. they've they seen it, um, you know, when we've had players who've been high profile, um, doing well on the tour, 
few years ago down at Wentworth when I gave your putter away. Yeah, um, thanks for that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> just so that you know guys 007 is not the is is not one of those serial codes that comes around very often so when andy gorman was kindly given the opportunity to choose the new putter mm -hmm. that we're looking at you know which was the um m1t if i remember rightly um uh, uh, yeah, 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 it was, yeah. yeah, M1T, which is, you know, sort of an Anza star head, you know, for those of you, you know, get an idea of it, but a, a slightly oversized. I fell in love with this putter straight away. Better than that was when I checked the serial codes on the handful that you've got, 007 was sitting there. So I said, right, stick a shaft in that and we'll go from there. Daft as it may be, I carry my putters around with me for whatever reason when I go to a tournament. We're down at the PGA Championship at Wentworth. And a certain fellow comes over and said, I broke my putter. Can you help me out? So Melvin comes over and said, you wouldn't happen to have your putter, would you? <laughs> Which I did very kindly, took one for the team right, and lost 007. Which and double, 007 became quite famous in America because it was a guy who plays on the American tour. Yes. And, and, and the story of 007 <laughs> has been, been podcasted out in America by an American magazine, but that's going back years and years ago. But, you know, yeah. it, it, it is, he was playing with it. it he was a, he was a player. I mean, that was, that was a guy who was using it on the tour and 007 was used on the tour for quite some time. It was, yeah. Malvin, yeah. how, how has the putter changed for you in the last 16 years? What, what trends, what kind of adjustments have you seen over the last 16 years with putters? Um, interesting. That's what Payne Stewart won with, other than it was a different material in the head. Mm. Mm. So one of the things about this product, which is, is pretty um, unique, I think, is that the original shape putter is still probably the most popular putter that we sell. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that goes back to 1997. Now, there's always enhancements technology moves on, machinery moves on and all that sort of thing. So the RST is still the same and the biggest selling putter shape is still the same, which is the FGP. Mm. Uh, now there've been lots of versions of that. I think Seymour have, have sort of reacted to the market. Uh, the market went mallet crazy probably three or four years ago. And obviously Seymour had to, to, to go with that to make it an attractive sales proposition. Um, the original giant, uh, which came out, which was, which was a very big head, um, about five, six years ago, was something that, again, people said, oh, it's, you know, same as Nicholas had, because he, he won with it. Yeah, the MT response. He had the world putter. And it was that, that type of putter. It was a sort of showstopper when you look down at it. Mm. Uh, so lots of designs have been changed, but um, the original shape and RST is still there. Now, again, we in, in our classic series, which is, which is our entry level, we have eight different shapes now. Uh, four, I think, are blades and four are mallet style putters. So I think because the technology works and it's great, you're not going to change that. I think the materials have changed. We have some aluminium putters now and, and mainly stainless steel putters. When I first started, we still had a brass putter. Um, so, you know, again, different fields. People are more sensitive to how the ball comes off the face now because ball technology has changed totally. So, you know, we've got grooves in putter faces, all, all the technology that's come through that's proven to work, uh, I think we, we built into the putters. Mm. Yeah, for me, I think one of the biggest things that we've seen in the last, well, we've talked about it over the last 18 months, we saw it at the beginning of 2020 was, uh, you know, not necessarily a game changer, um, you know, but a... You know, as the brand Seymour has grown, more and more players have asked for, you know, a, a hosel of some description. Um, and, you know, Seymour have adapted a version of a, a swan neck or a plumber's neck 
um, hosel and it works still with the RST. Um, I know you've got one because I've just seen yeah. you grab it off the side there. <laughs> but, um, you know, essentially all styles of putter can, you know, can be developed to work. Um, you know, and I'm a huge proponent of the um, fact that actually any style works as long as you like the look of it, then, you know, you understand how the style of the putter helps you with alignment. You know, those are the characteristics you need to be mindful of. It doesn't, no particular style of putter works with any particular style of um, a stroke. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a straighter or a lesser arc, or, you know, or a more exaggerated arc. If you like the putter, you can make it work. And, you know, but folk like to look at things different. So it, Seymour, opened up a new marketplace. I think that was the term that I used, you know, 12 months or so ago when I saw the proposal, um, you know, because it opened up a, the opportunity to be able to get RST into uh, an offset hosel design. And it's had whistle shaft before, which has been a bend in the shaft, but, you know, this, this was something that fits very similarly to, you know, what we know as a, a plumber's neck. Um, I, think, I think you're hitting the nail on the head with the statement people like to look at. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the things that's really, really um, important is with any golf club, you don't like the look of it, it won't be a partner for long. No, you're three owls, Andy. You're three owls. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is uh, there is a, a market out there where people just don't like a straight inputter. So effectively... Um, you know, going what I mean by that, going straight into the putter like that. Yeah. Some people just do not like that. No. From a visual perspective. Mm. So we we had um, we had a plumber's neck style putter with the RST that was on on top of the uh, bevel here, but it made it quite bulky, um, and it was. It wasn't the greatest success. It worked. I never thought the R. I, I wouldn't sell it to somebody who was struggling with lining up because it was very. It wasn't it wasn't in your face like this RST. No. So you know it wasn't going to help you as much as it could. So over the years they've been looking at a way to do this, developing the RST, and that's effectively what they've come up with. And you'll see the difference with this, where most. Hosel style put has come out uh, slightly different to that yeah. as as sits back. Yeah, they go up and then then taper off with yeah. normally with a with a different style of shaft or whatever. But as, as comes out at the lie angle on the putter, yes, and then incorporates the RST, and then you've got the offset there, giving you the, that plumber's neck style look. Mm. Now that's available on about uh, seven or eight of our models. Uh, it's not available on every every putter. Uh, and, and the reason for that is in the design of the putter. To do this, you, uh, the red dot needs to sit behind the, behind the hosel. So it takes the putter slightly away from the center, but, but yeah, yeah. It, it's been, it, it was one of those things that was launched as Andy said, the 2019 PGA show, mm. um, which with what's happened in the last year has not been the greatest time to, to launch a new product. No. So in a sense, it's a new product for us going into 2020 as well. Although we've been successful with it, we, we've not been able to show it yep. at demo days, get it in as many people's hands, hands as we like, show them mm. the benefits of it. Uh, but it, it is pretty, pretty unique. Um, this is this is machined in the US. Um, it's a, it's a really nice piece of engineering that goes into the putter. Yeah, yeah. good good time. When we get product from Seymour, it comes in bits like this. Um, so when you buy a putter off us, it starts in bits. It gets a job sheet. Um, we were talking earlier about different head weights. All that. All our putters are bendable, so lie angle is adjustable. Loft angle is adjustable. I'm not a fan of adjusting the loft angle, but again, with the machinery and the everybody who measured on all these things now, we, we do, do adjust loft. 
But the one unique thing is we have what's called a spud internal housel, which fits in the bottom of the shaft and then goes into the head. And then you're bending the housel, not the shaft. So I can remember in the old days, people would bring putters and say, can you bend it? And you'd be thinking, oh, the shaft's going to go in a minute or it's going to crack or yeah. something. With this, that doesn't happen. And the other unique thing about this is we've got three weights. So we've got five grams, 10 grams, 20 grams. So again, length of put to weight of grip, head weight in the initial instance, is all taken into account when we build a putter. Or if the fitter, the uh, teacher says, I need a heavier head, I need this, mm. we can then custom build it for them in that way. Again, it, it's a very unique experience for somebody. And it, you know, it, it, there are putter companies that do that, but they want to charge four or 500 pounds. Mm. Our putter comes into the marketplace at below 200 pounds. Yeah. And the quality of everything there is fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Marvin, we've seen it. We are, well, me and Andy, especially from comments to us in the past, we've seen a boom in kind of custom building, custom fitting. Why do you think the customer is going more towards that than buying off the shelf? Um, well, I think obviously there's been a message come out for that. I think it's become more readily available. Mm -hmm. I think the, the problem is, and I've done quite a few Zooms with lots of custom fitters, um, identifying what is a custom fitting and what is a matching? What is a, oh, we got this, well, two or three, we'll leave you to it, and that one comes up best, so you've been custom fitted. Um, so mm -hmm. there are lots of different styles of custom fitting. Um, if somebody comes to club for clubs, for me, it's the same process as Seymour. I don't have sets of clubs here. We start with components, we build them in the shop here. They're unique to them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't buy component clubs from companies who won't sell me components. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, not my, it's not my philosophy and it's also a market I can't compete in mm -hmm. because everybody can do that. They can call it custom fitting. It's like, you know, through this uh, pandemic, um, two of the major brands in the US are doing telephone fitting. Mm. How can you custom fit somebody over the telephone? It's relying on the fact that the customer knows exactly what they need. And even you and I have known each other now for, you know, best part of, you know, probably close to me, it's certainly 12 years if it's not 15. And, you know, the daft thing is that I'll turn up on your doorstep and I'll hit golf balls and go through the process we'll test shafts you know it's great when we've got the click fittings and you know we can you know turn up a screw and we can change the shafts and whatever over but you know when we go through that process it changes over a period of time as well and you know to some degree i do know what i'm doing and i do know what i like and i do know what i want that's not always what i get I, you know i put my hands up to that because yeah. i take melvin's best judgment on that um you know, when it comes to it, you know, it comes down to putters and, and, and wedge fitting, you know, I don't think an awful lot changes, you know, sometimes, you know, Melvin will bend a club in, you know, because I've told him to or asked him to, um, and he doesn't want to, um, it, you know, but I'm looking for the club to do something very uniquely and, you know, and that's where it goes. But there's not very many clients who know exactly what they want to do that's not to you know batter those that are, are listening because you all know that i'll call a spade a spade but ultimately you know if you turn around and said to somebody you know we know there's some brands out there that only do custom fit, uh, custom fitting online or remotely and they don't sell you can't even see the product before you receive it now it might look very good when you put it down you know those brands are making a market for themselves by selling direct to the customer. But does the customer really know what's best for them? Mm. Yeah. I think the, 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 the thing that um, this, this is 50% of a custom fit is feel. Mm. Communicator of feel is the person that's buying the clubs. Yeah. Yeah. 
and he can't communicate that to a piece of paper or a guy on the telephone or mm. whatever. The only way you can get to understand what he likes is to give him options to hit so he understands what the feel is of different clubs. Lots yeah. of people will come in and say, oh, I'm not good enough to have feel or whatever. They still tell you when they don't like the feel of something. They don't like the feel of it. Uh, uh, it. It's very much about any good custom fit. It's all about listening. Mm. Data, yeah. Yeah, data, is, data is fine, but data is just one of the tools in the custom fit. It's mm. not the be all and end all. Going and hitting balls on a track man or any launch monitor, looking at the data and saying, yeah, that's what I want because of that, or that's what I want because that's what comes up as matching mm. closest to. That's not a custom fit, that's a matching. Yeah? Yes, yeah. Custom fit is about understanding the client. What do they want? Asking them questions maybe they don't want to get. You know, I get lots of older clients. Do you have arthritis? What do you struggle with? All those other things mm. come into a custom fit. So it's a totally different uh, experience to yeah. have a custom fit with a, a, a good custom fitter as it is to go to a shop or... I'm not saying it's bad. It might suit what you want to do. You might not want somebody poking their nose in and telling you what to do. You just want to go and do it yourself. And that, that's fine. That's mm -hmm. not, I, I think the word, we, we had this discussion a lot. I think the word custom fit has got kind of abused yeah. into, into all categories of anybody doing anything that is, is having an input. Yeah. Yeah, my challenge from a custom fitting of a putter, you know, bring it, bring it back to the things that I do, you know, I've, I, I make recommendations and, you know, sort of advise folk when it comes to wedges. But, you know, to carry a stock of wedges, you know, to, to be able to offer an, you know, a significant advice by try this, try this, try this, that's assuming that the skill is repeatable. You yeah. know, as well with a wedge, which is extremely much more challenging than it is with a longer club that swings itself because of the speed of the club head movement, etc. You know, start to get 70 plus mile an hour club and swing speeds and the club in itself is moving itself. There's very little persuasion coming from the golfer, you know, at the, at the business end where we're striking the golf ball. When it comes to wedges, less than 50 mile an hour, 50 yard shots, then there's some influence potentially from the player. When it comes down to putters, you know, what I'm... You know, you know, you know, I'm all about posture. So posture determines what the length of the club's going to be, etc. You know, but to go to a big box store and have a custom fitting because somebody's put you onto some electronic equipment and only be given the option of a 34 inch putter is a pitiful way of offering a custom fit on a putter because yeah. you're still asking a player to fit a little bit like you know, if Foot Joy were selling shoes, you know, at six, seven, and eight. And that's the only options. That's a little bit like the options you've got when buying a putter off the shelf. Yeah. yeah. And when we go to custom build, the custom build options, it may be 35 and three eighths, which is what you're cutting my putters at these days, you know, and you know, the grip cap determines it might be a fraction longer and, and different grips are going to tell us that it's going to be slightly longer or shorter, depending on the thickness of the, that cap, you know, the new style grips with the different under listings and overlays and, you know, rubberized or whatever they might be are going to offer some variants. And do you want it to finish at 35 and three eighths or to be cut at 35 and three eighths, you know, but that's the level of detail that we get the lie angle adjustments, you know, that's, you know, significant and, and, you know, to be able to do that from the building process, I think, is is key. Um, I'm more than happy for you to share what other brands you, you know, offer at Four Counties, um, you know, in terms of products, Melvin. And, you know, we're here. We will come back to see more very shortly because mm -hmm. they are doing something special for us um, along with yourselves. But, um, you know, tell us a little bit more about the brands that you work with and, and, and to some degree, maybe why. Okay, I mean... Relatively simple, really, in the sense that um, I, I work with Mura, Vega, um, New Level, um, not not some household names, and then Tour Edge Exotics yeah. and Wishon. Um, now, the, the key thing for me is that 
I'm a true Temper Performance Fitting Centre. Uh, we can get shafts from pretty much all manufacturers. So when you come, yes, the heads and, uh, and the um, are there, but the shafts we can get from anybody, same with grips. So it, it actually is built uh, to, to the level, giving you a total choice on everything you, you want, really. And uh, I think that's that's sort of a, a big difference, whereas, you know, you go to a, a major brand, they have a, a good selection of uh, shafts available, but that's where it stops. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we don't start. I mean, I, I work with Tour Edge Exotics. I buy components off them. They, in the States, are very much big in offering complete clubs. Uh, we've gone down the route of components, and that's worked really, really well for us because it's a fabulous product. Again, a product that we support on the tour, particularly the seniors tour, where they've been exceptionally mm -hmm. successful. And again, from my point of view, I'm a small business. Um, there's no point in me trying to go head to head with all the major brands and all the sort of major discount policies that go on and all the web selling that goes on. We have to identify, yes, we do something different. Yes, we custom fit uh, in our own way, which is sort of mirrored by lots and lots of good custom fitters out there. Mm -hmm. But we also want to have a product that's slightly, slightly different. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've trusted you now. I can't. I can't remember the last time <laughs> I bought. I get. I do buy my clubs in in the. Like, occasionally, I get a few um, that will be sent to me, and you know, sort of, can you try these? And you know, and the first thing I do is I make a phone call to you. You know that, and you know, I, I have my favourite shafts, which are not um, True Temper. Um, I, I will put a plug in for KBS here because all <laughs> shafts are available. <laughs> um, but um, you know, I, we will go down and we'll put the um, we'll put you know the, the offerings together. We'll look at the head weights. It's such a thorough um, you know sort of experience for me. I mean, I've had clubs built. You know, I'll say this. I you know, I've got pings in the bag at the moment. We've gone through such incredible detail. I've bought shafts to you. I've bought sets of clubs made by Ping. There's been nothing wrong with them. I said that I wanted to test something. And you've been extremely gracious with your time. Allowed, I've allowed you to have the experimentation going on as well. And we've done it as a joint exercise. I know you, in, you, know, you do enjoy it when you've got the time to be able to do it. But, you know, I can say that Melvin's level of detail that has gone into creating a set of clubs that, you know, I've, will find very difficult to replace um, purely and simply because we've been able to put shaft offerings in there that are not off the shelf. You know, they are completely uh, bespoke. And this is the level of detail you will not get from a big box store. And, you know, I've, I can't remember now pulling a set of clubs off the shelf or pulling them in from a manufacturer and not have you do some work on them. I can't remember the last time that we did that. You know, I'm, I'm a really simple guy. Um, except when I turn up <laughs> uh, every, every day's a learning day so there we go. yeah but I'm really simple and I learned very early on when I started club fitting the better quality components you use yeah the easier it is to build good clubs yeah yeah well yeah Matt, we're seeing that trend on tour now Matt when we talked about it on last week's podcast about golfers having the the choice now with their golf bag they're not tied to a manufacturer are you seeing that more of, of players and maybe exploring the brands that you offer because of the kind of freedom that they've, they've been given now I don't think on the European tour I, I think on uh, on the main European tour and I think it's pretty similar on the PGA tour I, I think the opportunity for us as, as brands, both, both with Seymour and Tour Edge, is obviously the seniors tour, but also the, the mini tours, um, mm -hmm. you know, from the, the sort of challenge and, and the Euro Pro tour. And, and um, so I think the, the opportunity, and I think we, earlier this year, we've worked with two or three 
a management company and we've also worked with two or three guys and we we focused with in conjunction with Seymour in the US at getting product into mini tour players um, mm -hmm. and you know Stephen Tiley who's been a Seymour ad advocate for years um, you know is is been a great advocate on the challenge tour for us because mm -hmm. you know he puts well when he tells all his mates where his butters come from. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we, we've always had a few people on the challenge tour, but we, we've also now started to sort of look at all the mini tours. And, and again, that was this year because the mini, the tour scenario changed totally because of COVID. Mm. So we had all these different one day tour events jump out. Uh, and we've had quite a lot of guys we've got who've been doing well in those events. Um, but as with everything, people um, on the tour, there's one thing that is 100% for sure. They'll keep changing things. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can have what you feel is the greatest product in the world that works really well for all them, and they will put really great with it. And two weeks later, they'll have changed it. Because, yeah. you, you know, that's the way the tour players some tour players are they keep changing and they keep changing and they'll go back to it and uh, it, it, it that is the you have to learn very early in the tour not to get upset when somebody takes something out of the bag yeah. it's nothing personal that's just the nature it's like you know they always blame the caddy that's what he's there for you know yeah they used to get fired a lot more regularly as well that, don't, that doesn't happen quite as much these days but um you know, I, and my experiences as well, you know, crikey, coach is the first to be fired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. It's always the coach's fault. But, you know, my, my thing is, you know, a great product doesn't always end up in a tour bag for a number of reasons. And it may end up in a tour bag for one weekend, you know, and the player has done extremely well with it. But that then means that a player is cannon fodder for the bigger players the bigger industry players, the manufacturers, because one, they know the players are likely to choose to change, you know, or, or are fickle enough to change, even, even after a decent weekend and a decent paycheck, um, you know, and they know the guys who, you know, very quickly, they want to get their own product in, especially if there's a little bit of form potentially or a bit of confidence boosted, you know, and, it, and being on the tour is hard on the basis that you are competing you know, if you're on the practice green with your bag of equipment, you are competing against some major corporations with bottomless pits, you know, to be able to entice a player, even if it is just with a product or tour support, you can't be there every week. I know you don't travel to Europe and play the, you know, and, and the European um, tour travel um, sort of operations there, it gets so costly. And, and there's a small operation, you know, not just four counties, but, you know, Seymour and you know, tour edge, that support is very limited, you know, fewer events, although yeah. we've seen it this year, you know, in the UK, we've had more events in the UK because of COVID. So we've had a good thing, but no availability to go and work with players directly. So it's, it's had its limits. Um, you know, it, it, when I look at, look in the bag of players and I see players trying and tinkering and I'm on the putting green with you, you know, or be independent of you at the time, you know, watching players coming over and trying the product, hitting some putts, knocking the ball in, because they're all good enough on the putting green to knock the ball in with anything, you know, to be fair. But they can start yeah. to see something happen. You know, it, it becomes, um, you know, a bit of excitement around this particular product. And then, you know, the guy's missed the cut with, the, with his club that he's been using for the last, you know, sort of six months. You know, and you think, why hasn't he made that change? And, you know, like you say, you do get very thick skin <laughs> very quickly. Yeah, you know, I, I've got a little, sto little story, which is which is quite interesting. And it, it's happened a number of times while I've been involved where with Challenge Tour players, we've uh, just recently we had a Challenge Tour player who um, had been in college in America uh, had used the Seymour, came out of it, and then wanted the Seymour. I got it to him Tuesday before the event um, was in Northern Ireland. The event was mm. put it in the bag and won the event. He played with that putter and another and a, a 
had another Seymour, uh, PTM1. He was playing with an FGP originally. I had a Seymour, I had a PTM1 as well. And he played with that, and he is a regular on the European tour now. But he doesn't use our putter anymore because he has a 14 club deal with a major mm -hmm. manufacturer who says he has to use their putter. Yeah. Now, that's the economics. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a young guy and, you know, somebody's coming to you and offering you sign there and you get this much and every time you win you get this much and every time then we don't pay anybody uh people play our putter because they want it or they need it uh, mm -hmm. and um so we that's that's just one instance that's recent um very recent and we we've had i can think while i've been in this we've had three or four of those yeah no, it's challenging we got them to the tour but then we, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's madness, really. Which, but... is, which is also illogical as well, if you think about it. Yeah. And, you know, we see it an awful lot. We see players changing coach. You know, he can't use this coach. That coach can't do this piece of equipment, that piece of equipment. It, you know, changing a winning formula when it works at a division slightly lower. Playing golf is one of the unique sports for me. I think if you can win on the Challenge Tour, you can win on the European Tour. Because winning's winning. You play different golf courses, but you become familiar with the newer courses that you're going to be playing. And we've seen players, and this is why I think we've seen so many diverse winners this year, is we're playing different golf courses. The players that fit the eye of the golf course, you know, that goes out and, you know, competes really well and has this confidence on this golf course they've seen for the last 20 years, you know... It, it, that's changed because we've thrown a mix of golf courses that haven't been played for the last 10 years or, you know, brand new golf courses that players have never seen, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, some of these kids. But, but also I think the visual, the visual is something of which I think Augusta showed us. Yes. When we, when we watched Augusta on the telly this year, yeah. you know, we'd never been there. No, it was a it was a different. Now, when you're playing it and you're used to all the the patrons or being lined up, it's mm. a visually it's a totally different golf course from what you what you're doing. So the whole uh, dynamic of what's gone on this year mm. kind of same in the Premier League. Yes, you know, yes. playing without crowds. You know, now we've got. It's getting annoying the amount of noise they're they're playing through speakers to make it sound like a football. Yeah, but but it, it, it is a totally different world. And that, you're seeing that in soccer where you know home games and away games are pretty much the same level. So. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, um, I think it's a fa fairly good time for us to introduce. Uh, not the main reason why you're on, but I did ask you um, a, a few weeks ago. If you would be so kind to have a word with the guys at Seymour, and it took no time at all for the answer to be yes, um, I'm going to hand it over to you. We've got a special offering for our listeners, not just on the podcast, but we're going to launch it through the podcast, through Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So it's going across all of our uh, social media networks, but for the UK and Europe only, because this is coming through from Four Counties Golf, uh, as the U um, European and UK distributor of Seymour. But what would you like to uh, say to our listeners? Okay, guys, um, we spoke a lot about the putter. Yeah. We told you how good it is, and we're going to give you an opportunity to try one. Free of charge. Just try one, but yeah, it'll yeah, be yours. One, it'll yeah. be yours. Um, obviously, we, we have to work the logistics out if you're at the other end of the world, but you know, um, we, we, we can do all that, I'm sure. Uh, but a putter from our classic series, which is, uh, as I say, there, there are eight shapes in that classic series. There is the also the fact that there is a, quite a number of left-handers. So left-handers, please be aware. Yeah, you know, we, we, we can take care of you. Um, there are a number of, you can have putters with the non-straight whistle shaft, the W shaft, as we've described. We're not showing it today, but it basically is a bend shaft that's seen in most putters, yeah. or a hoosel style putter. So there's, there's lots, you know, so a guy is playing a straight putter now, there's an opportunity to try a hosel putter if you get it free. So okay. going forward, 
that, that's what we're doing. It's a putter from our classic series that will be free of charge. If you are, and I, think, I don't think there's a problem with this, Andy, they can also have the value of that if they want to go with something that's at the, at the higher end and, and pay the balance, you know, that, that's up to them. So if they're already a Seymour user in the FGP family, the classic series family, and they want to go for a platinum, platinum or a Nashville or something that's sort of in the, the higher end bracket, there's a, there's a nice way to start with it. Well, that's a fantastic offering. Yeah. I really appreciate that. To throw into that mix as well, that if you are in the UK, you can come down to my studio and have a free fitting along with the putter. Um, so we'll go through that. You know, you, you were looking at a package here in excess of £400 just on the standard package alone. Um, you know, so that's, you know, for a custom fitting, uh, custom built putter that will be delivered to your door. Um, that's offering is available to you. Uh, if you're in Europe or a little further away and can't, I will be more than happy to exercise my online uh, experiences uh, or, and expertise on custom fitting online with you via a Zoom call. So, you know, a great offering for you. Um, like I could say it's um, it, it worked extremely well during the first lockdown custom fitting. And I have done the, the online custom fitting along with the help of the guys uh, in Seymour in the States, as well as Melvin you know, to be able to get product in your hands. So, you know, it's a great, I think it's a great prize, a uh, great offering for the start of 2021. We're going to look to 2021 as being, you know, a completely different year to what we've experienced. I think it might be a little slow to start. I think that'd be fair to say, but we're going to look forward, um, you know, along working with brands like Seymour uh, and certainly four counties, you know, we really do appreciate the work that you do, Melvin and, uh, and for Anne as well. Uh, working tirelessly behind the scenes, making sure the invoices come out uh, in a timely <laughs> manner, um, making sure payments get made. Um, but, you know, the, the work you do, you know, for me is hugely appreciated. You are you are you are an expert in your field and, you know, we're working with fantastic products. So I do really appreciate um you know, the, the opportunity to continue that work with you and to see the Seymour putter in the hands of somebody, uh, hopefully new, but if, you know, like I say, somebody wants to upgrade to, you know, a, a, a more exclusive part of the brand uh, lineup, you know, you could, you two could be gaming a Nashville Platinum Series putter like me, um, you know, and I'll make sure that it's custom built specifically for you. You'll get all the fittings done. If you want to come into the studio in the new year, you can do that. Melvin, I really appreciate your time. Um, Gareth, thanks for everything uh, as well. You know, a couple of questions there that uh, I did say to Melvin beforehand that I wouldn't throw anything he wouldn't know. Um, I didn't say that Gareth wouldn't, uh, but I think he managed <laughs> extremely well there. <laughs> Gareth probably tempted, you know, to, to ask a few questions that would tease you. It's normally what he does to me, but, uh, uh, you know, but yeah, it's been fantastic to have you on. I do wish you both uh, and everybody at Seymour fantastic Christmas and a happy new year and uh, you know trust that it'll be prosperous for you um, but appreciate your time and as always uh, every, all the efforts that you put in thank you thanks guys and guys thanks for listening oh you're welcome all right thank you. bye for now bye